the members leave and come back. It, it's no disrespect. They're doing their job. Senator Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Tragically, <clears throat> survivals, survivors of, uh, of sexual abuse are often repeatedly victimized and re-victimized over and over and over again by having uh, non-consensual images of themselves uh, on social media platforms. There's a NCMEC study uh, that pointed out there was um, one instance um, of CSAM that reappeared more than 490,000 times after it had been reported, after it had been reported. So we need tools in order to deal with this. We need, uh, frankly, laws in order to mandate standards so that this doesn't happen, so that we have a systematic way of getting rid of this stuff, because they, there, there is literally no plausible justification, uh, no way of defending this. Uh, uh, one tool, uh, one that I think would be particularly effective, is a, a bill that I'll be introducing uh, later today, and I invite all my committee members to join me. It's called the PROTECT Act. The PROTECT Act would, in pertinent part, require websites to verify age and verify that they've received consent of any and all individuals appearing on their site in pornographic images. And it also require platforms to have meaningful processes for an individual seeking to have uh, images of him or herself re removed in a timely manner. Uh, Ms. Yaccarino, based on your understanding of existing law, what might it take for a person to have those images removed, say from X? I, Senator Lee, thank you. It sounds like uh, what you're going to introduce into law in terms of ecosystem-wide and user consent sounds exactly like part of the philosophy of why we're uh, supporting the SHIELD Act. And no one should have to endure non-consensual images being shared online. Yep. And w without that, without laws in place, it and it's fantastic any time a company, uh, as, uh, as you've described with yours, wants to take those steps, it's very helpful. It can take a lot longer than it should, and sometimes it does, to the point where somebody had images uh, uh, shared uh, 490,000 times after it was reported to the authorities, and, and that's deeply concerning. Um, but yes, uh, the PROTECT Act uh, would work in tandem with. It's a good complement to the SHIELD Act. Um, Mr. Zuckerberg, let's turn to you next. Uh, as you know, I, I feel strongly about privacy and believe that one of the best protections uh, uh, for an individual's privacy online uh, involves end-to-end -end encryption. But we also know that a great deal of grooming and sharing of CSAM happens to occur uh, on end-to-end -end encrypted systems. Tell me, does, does Meta allow juvenile accounts on its platforms to use encrypted messaging services within those apps? Sorry, Senator, what do you mean juvenile? Uh, underage, people under 18. Under 18. Um, we, we allow under, people under the age of 18 to use WhatsApp, and, and we do allow that to be encrypted, yes. Do you have a, a bottom-level age at which they're not allowed to use it? I, yeah, I don't, think we allow any people, age? I don't think we allow people under the age of 13. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Mr. Citron? Uh, on Discord, do you have, um, do you allow kids to have accounts to access encrypted messaging? Um, Discord is not allowed to be used by children under the age of 13, and we do not use end-to-end -end encryption for text messages. You know, we believe that it's very important to be able to respond to well-formed law, law enforcement requests, um, to, uh, and we're also working on proactively building technology we're working with a, a nonprofit called Thorn to build a grooming classifier so that uh, our teen safety assist feature can actually identify these conversations if they might be happening so we can intervene and um, give those teens tools to get out of that situation or, or potentially even report those conversations and those people to law enforcement. And, and encryption, is, as much as it can prove useful elsewhere, it, it can be harmful, especially if you're on a site where you know children are being groomed and exploited. If you allow children on to an end to end encryption um, enabled app, uh, that can prove problematic. Now, uh, let's go back to you for a moment, Mr. Zuckerberg. Instagram recently announced that it's going to restrict all teenagers from access to uh, uh, eating disorder material, suicidal 
ideation uh, themed material, self harm content, and that's fantastic. Uh, that's great. Um, what's what's odd? What what I'm trying to understand is, is why it is that Instagram is um, only restricting it's it's restricting access to to uh, sexually explicit content, but only for teens ages 13 to 15. Uh, why not restrict it for 16 and 17 year olds as well? Uh, Senator, my understanding is that we don't allow sexually explicit content uh, on on the service for people of any age. Um, the the um, how is that going? Uh, you know, our our uh, our prevalence metrics suggest that w I think it's 99 percent or so of the content that we remove, we're able to identify automatically using AI systems. So I think that our efforts in this, while they're not perfect, I think are industry leading. Um, the the other thing that you asked about was. Um, self-harm content, which is what we recently restricted. And we made that shift. The, the, um, I think the state of the science is shifting a bit. Previously, we believed um, that when people were thinking about self-harm, it was important for them to be able to express that and get support. And now more of the, the, the thinking in the field is that it's just better to not show that content at all, which is why we recently moved to restrict that from showing up for, uh, for, for those teens at all. Okay. Is there a way for, uh, for parents to make a request on what their kid can see or not see on your sites? Um, there are a lot of parental controls. Uh, I, I'm not sure if they're, I don't think that we currently have a control around topics. But we do allow parents to control um, the time that the children are on the site. And also, a lot of it is based on kind of monitoring and understanding what the, the teen's experience is, Mr. What, they're, what they're interacting Mr. with. Mr. Citroen, uh, Discord allows pornography on its site. Now, reportedly, 17% of minors who use Discord has, have had online sexual interactions on your platform, 17%. And 10%. Uh, have those interactions with someone that the minor believed uh, to be an adult. Uh, do you restrict minors from, um, from accessing Discord servers that host pornographic material on them? Uh, Senator, yes, we, we do restrict minors from accessing content um, that is marked for adults. Um, Discord also does not recommend content to people. Discord is a chat app. We do not have a feed or an algorithm that boosts content. Um, so uh, we allow adults to share content with other adults in adult-labeled spaces, and we do not allow teens to access that content. Okay. I see my time's expired. Thank you. <laughs>